What's going on, everybody? I'm Cigar Show Tim, and you're watching another episode of Tobacco Talk, where every week I review a cigar, give you my thoughts on it, flavor, draw, construction, burn, everything you want to know about from my pal's perspective, and hopefully educate you in the process at the same time. So this week's cigar, this week's cigar, as you can see right here, is the Winwood Hill Cigars Deranged. Now this is one in a series, if you will, in a collection, a grouping of cigars that have been put out that are all done by CLE, Christian Aroa, and I'm really curious about this one. It's a smaller cigar. It's got a wrapper that I'm quite fond of, so we'll see how that plays into it. But without any further ado, let's check out the Winwood Hills Deranged. Let's light it up. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and get this cut and lit and see how, it, where'd my ashtray go? I lose stuff on this a lot. You think I'm better prepared for when I record. Oh, well, I'll use another one of my blocks as my ashtray and we'll just let it sit there and <laughs> life will be pretty and happy again. All right, let's cut into this bad boy. Let's get some cold drawn notes here. Oh wow, really spicy, like baking spice, like a gingerbread cookie almost. It literally tastes like a gingerbread cookie. Interesting. Well, there's only one thing left to do. Let's get her torched up. Okay, so on initial light up, wow, that's just got a ton of flavor in it. On initial light up, you get some pretty strong earthy notes in there, some rich soil, some baking spice, lots of flavors are happening in this one. You get some, some, some baking spice in there, maybe it's a cinnamon, maybe not, something kind of like that, can't quite put my finger on what it is. Check it out. Some pretty good breadiness that's in there as well. Little bit of spice, definitely not spicery. A little bit of like a, a white pepper spice maybe to it. Some leather, leather's coming through now. All right. Tons of flavor notes, lots is going on. So I'm gonna jump into the first third and see, well, see what happens with this. And I will be back with you all in just a second. Be right back. All right, everybody, welcome back at the end of the first third on the cigar. And I gotta tell you, it's gotten pretty, uh, pretty diverse as far as the flavors and what's coming in now from the original Dry draw with getting the, or cold draw. I don't know why I said dry draw still. I think it's because I hear another reviewer say it too and dry, and it, whatever. On the cold draw, getting the gingerbread, gingerbread note and things like that. But uh, going through the first third here, it's transitioned. There's definitely some chocolate notes, some cocoa notes in there. There's a little bit of a sweetness to it as well. The earthiness is still there. It's, it's not as prominent, but it's definitely still there. But it's picked up just a little hint of like a, and maybe the, the sweetness is like a sweet cream, kind of a, a creaminess note in there as well. So it's very much, with all the flavor notes, I'm getting very much of like a sweeter dessert cigar for me in the first third. But I want to go over the uh, makeup of the cigar just so everybody's got it. It's a four and a half by 50. 
And at the very beginning when I said that it was a wrapper that I'm quite fond of, it's because it is a, uh, and I'm reading this from jrcigars.com, that's where I'm pulling this information when they've got it up there, but uh, it is a Connecticut Broadleaf Sumatra Maduro wrapper. So it's a Sumatran wrapper, Connecticut Broadleaf Maduro wrapper, long, long title, but I love uh, Sumatran uh, tobacco. I love Sumatra coffee. I love it. Just, I love that region. Um, so that's what the wrapper is. And then uh, everything else inside is Honduran from the binder to the filler. It says that it's about a medium body. For me personally right now, it's probably a decent medium. It's not medium plus. It's not a light to a medium. It's probably good solid medium. And so uh, again, that's what it says on JR Cigars as far as the blend and different things like that on it. But those are the flavor notes that I picked up in the first third. That's what I'm enjoying about it so far. I'm curious as to how it progresses. Uh, and then as you can see, the burn on here is not doing bad at all. The burn has um, pretty much stayed straight the entire time. And I am enjoying it. So we will see what happens in the second third. It's only a four and a half inch long cigar, so it's not going to take me very long. But I'm going to jump into the second third. As soon as I finish that, I'll come back with you. Come back to you with my thoughts, and we'll go from there. Be right back. All right, everybody. Welcome back. At the end of the second third, getting down to where the band is, as you can see. And the burn line on it really isn't too crazy wavy. It's got a little wave to it, but it's not terrible. But the flavors, let me tell you, the flavors in this second third have absolutely changed and transitioned from where they were in the first third. So it started to get to um, a little more of like a really bitter dark chocolate like bitter dark chocolate for me and my palate which i'm not a huge fan of i'm not i'm not a huge fan of of bitterness especially in cigars and then there's also like a dark 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 bitter coffee espresso note i love coffee i roast coffee i mean turbojet coffee that's that, that's what i do i do coffee but i don't care for over roasted bitter coffee that just is a complete turn off and, and this, in the second third for me, that's what I'm getting. I'm getting a dark, bitter, like cacao baking dark chocolate with that bitter, dark, dark espresso coffee note. And it's not hitting my palate really at all right now. So I'm going to continue smoking this down. We'll see what happens with it and go from there. Um, it started off pretty good. Enjoyed it. Second, third isn't really my cup of tea. So we'll see what happens as the cigar wraps up. I'll come back with my final thoughts on it. And then, of course, as always here on Tobacco Talk, I'll rate the cigar as to whether I think it is noteworthy or not. So I'm going to keep smoking it down. I'm going to take off the band here in a second. In fact, let's see if it comes off nice and easy here. And, oh, it did not. A little bit of the wrapper decided it wanted to flake right there but we'll see what happens i'm gonna smoke it down to the end i'll come back to you with my final thoughts and my rating as to whether it's now worthy or not see you in a second all right everybody let's wrap up this review and i was about to show you how the cigar actually was getting pretty wavy and had one part that was not burning and then it decided to correct itself so as you can see here that part right there that's flaking is the part that was not cooperating for me at all and it has recently changed its mind and wants to now so burn is doing better well staying good i guess the way i'll put it the burn's doing well now flavoring i did not care for the second third at all final third hasn't improved much for me to be completely honest there's a little bit of the sweetness that was there at the beginning maybe a hint of that sweet creaminess but it is so overshadowed by the uh, bitter bitter oh, like over roasted burnt espresso coffee that i just don't care for at all and the chocolate is there but it's so bitter and overshadowed by the bitter coffee espresso note in it that is just not for me 
But if you enjoy cigars with those notes, this may be a great cigar for you to check out and try. This is just my experience from my palate and how I have, you know, gone through the progression with this cigar. But if you want to check it out, I know it's available online. Again, it is the Wynwood Hills uh, cigars. It is the Deranged. That is this specific one. And go and check it out for yourself. You know here at Tobacco Talk, I'm going to give honest reviews. That's just how it is. It's not one of this, oh, I've got to say it this way, or I've got to do it that way, or oh, it's a bigger name brand, so i got to say it's good. No, I'm just going to say it the way that I experience a cigar, and that's how it's going to be. So I don't think you really need to guess as to whether I think it's noteworthy or not. For me, it's not. It's not a noteworthy cigar, and that's okay, because not every cigar is going to hit my palate. That's why you have a cigar journey. That's why you go and experience different cigars, and that's why you continue you know, checking out what's available in the market so that you can decide what is for you. So I think I'm going to wrap up this review at this point. I'm not even going to go all the way through this cigar and finish it because it's just too bitter, burnt, dark tasting for me. And it's just not for me. But if you've had this cigar from Wynwood Hills, I'd love to know your thoughts and your comments. So go ahead and put them down below and let me know your take on it. Have you even heard of it? Have you, I mean, it's, a, I think, a relatively new cigar. I don't know exactly when it came out. I've held on to it for, I've had it for probably about eight or nine months now. Maybe a little bit longer, but probably about eight or nine months. But put some comments down below. What was your take on it? Is this a cigar that's right up your alley? Who knows? It may be. But that's going to do it for this week's edition of Tobacco Talk. Enjoy your cigar journey. I'm Cigar Show Tim. As always, I'll see you.